Hello, it is Thursday, April 14th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle, so I'm looking forward to something unusual or complex or tricky today in the theme. We'll have to see. Um, And this possibly tricky or complex or unusual edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us all by Henrik Koskinen, Christina, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to all four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for uh, contributing to the sustainability of this channel by directly contributing. I really appreciate it. And I think that was a little redundant what I just said, but, uh, but I do very much appreciate it. It keeps this all sustainable. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can do that at patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can get access to all of the um, bonus video solves that have gone up to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. Still have to solve this week's Boss Words Fall Themeless League puzzle. I after last week's marathon 42 minute or whatever that was solve, really hope I can improve on that this week for your sake as well as mine. Um, anyway, uh, yes, thank you to everybody who's done so. Of course, if you'd like to become a benefactor, you can also get that daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. And also, we uh, we managed to hit 6,000 subscribers much more quickly than I was expecting. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel at this precise moment of recording. We're at 6,000 34 subscribers. So I know that's nothing to write home about by larger YouTube standards, but I'm uh, I'm pleased that we we hit hit that um, not too long after 5,000. So that's was very nice to see. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. All right, let's move on to today's puzzle, a Thursday puzzle, as I said. So something um, highly themed or interestingly themed. Uh, this interestingly themed, possibly, Thursday puzzle was constructed by Ashish Vensarkar and Narayan Venkat Subramanian. And I, I recognize Ashish Vensarkar's name. He's constructed at least over a dozen or a couple dozen puzzles, probably. Don't recognize Narayan Venkat Subramanian, but I think not a t- debut. Small handful of puzzles. Anyway, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And we'll have to see what is in store for us today. So let's go. Okay, Tour de France leg. Um, could this possibly just mean leg in French, jambe? Not sure. It could be something punny getting it, just leg in French. Oh, look, we've got some circled cells. I'm going to resist the urge to immediately click on those because it will take me straight to the revealer and I don't think I want to do that yet. If there were circles all over the puzzle, I would probably click on some of them. But I'm not going to do that yet because I don't want to potentially be spoiled on the on the theme. Anyway, Showbiz Grand Slam. I suspect this refers to an EGOT, an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony collection of awards that uh, an honor bestowed on relatively few over the decades these awards have been in existence. Self-seeker could be an egoist, maybe? And a subject of rationing in the old English Navy, grog. You could have a ration of, of grog, rum, rum-based drink. A work started by London's Philological Society. Um, I wonder, wonder if this is somehow through some sort of circuitous route, the Oxford English Dictionary. Let's, um, let's look here. Kin of kin, King Kong. King Kong's kin. Um... Great apes, maybe? I mean, King Kong is certainly the maybe the greatest of all apes, perhaps. I wonder if that's what this is. And here, a wood shop tool. I don't know. Is there a taperer? No. That was sort of a wild stab. I don't really know if that's anything. But it doesn't fit. So it doesn't matter. Discriminatory compensation practice. Um, discriminatory compensation practice. I don't know. Something around... Uh, privileging certain groups over one another, or I'm not sure. Probably be obvious with some crosses. Water monitoring group could be the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency in the United States. Band with the 4X Platinum albums Out of Time and Monster. I'm not sure. 
REM maybe. I mean, it would fit. It'll make me look like a complete fool if that's not not actually the answer. For I'm sure it's, this is this is one of those clues that's just blindingly obvious to everybody who knows it. And if you just don't happen to know it, it's meaningless. Uh, potential con. So this could mean con as in a scam or somebody or a scammer, I suppose, or it could mean a negative attribute of something as in pros and cons. And I don't know which it is. Anyway, pitchfork shaped letter would be psi, the um, Greek letter. So does that help here? Potential con. Not sure. Keen could be avid or sharp or could simply be uh, it could be enthusiastic, I suppose. Could be any of those. Homer's self-satisfied assertion. Okay, so I don't know if this is Homer of the Odyssey or Homer from the Simpsons or some other Homer. Probably one of those two, but it looks like it could end with am I because it's self-satisfied, so it'll be something referring to him. And actually, that's a nice cross with self-seeker if this is indeed egoist. Probably egoist is not necessarily thematic. It's probably not actually part of the theme, but it's kind of a fun cross. I'm seeing a fair amount of that this week, that kind of soft little echoing of, of thematic material. Anyway, multinational insurance initials could be, I think AIG is an insurance, an insurer. So maybe, uh, oh, cat in Cordoba would be Gato. I think. And so let's see. Good. Homer's self-satisfied assertion. And here we have feasts, e.g. So this could be a noun or a verb. It could be, look at these feasts arrayed out on this table. I don't know why you'd have more than one feast arrayed on a single table, but you get the point. Or it could be feasts as in uh, he feasts on these many feasts are right out on this table. So it could be either, but I'm not sure which. Here we have a kind of nut. Um, probably means nut in the botanical or culinary sense. But you could describe a person as a nut, so it could be that as well. Pours from one container to another. Decants. You could decant some wine into a decanter or into anything, I suppose. Affect emotionally. You could say that really touched me. It really affected me emotionally. And correct. Ding, I see. So the brackets around correct, it's not necessarily obvious, I think, what this would mean if you don't solve crosswords regularly. And since we do have these new subscribers seemingly recently, I'm going to re-explain this. I usually do. Um, that means basically we're creating a non-verbal answer. So it still could be something vocal. It still could be something you say, or, or, or uh, maybe say is the wrong word, but something you express through your vocal cords through your mouth, um, but it wouldn't necessarily be words. It could just be a sound like this ding. So you could be imitating the sound of a, I don't know, what, what is that imitating? I guess a sort of quiz show bell imitating the signal that your answer is correct. So that's what those brackets mean. It means we're, we're, going, we're looking for something that isn't necessarily um, verbal speech. It's just, you know, it could be, it could be a hem or pst or that, that kind of thing, something that isn't words. Anyway, Spanish article. Um, could be una. Um, let's see. What else can we get from crosses? Like some checking accounts. I suppose a checking account could be no fee. You could be not charged a fee for a particular checking account. It's plausible enough. Poker snafus. Um, I'm not enough of a poker player to instantly jump to the answer here. What about this name? That's an alphabetic trio. Oh, Stu. <laughs> Stu is, I would say, one of the more commonly used short male names in a crossword. That's, boy, that's, that's some list, isn't it? Most frequently used short male names in the New York Times crossword. That is one of the least useful lists one could possibly construct. And yet, it's the kind of thing I have in my brain, sadly. Anyway, uh, an alphabetic trio, I suppose, because it, it, this is a run of three consecutive letters in the alphabet, S-T-U. Um, it comes up in the crossword often with things like good name for a chef or name for someone who worries, a worrier, because you stew on things, that sort of thing. Bug that no one likes. So in this case, bug meaning, uh, me medically speaking, the flu, influenza. 
poker snafus. Oh, I see. Tells. So snafus meaning that's U.S. military slang that I think has sort of expanded out beyond that world to become part of idiomatic English speech, certainly idiomatic American English speech, but I think beyond beyond the borders of the U.S. as well. So stands for situation normal, all fouled up or something stronger than fouled. So I guess a poker snafu would be uh, a big problem because you're in, you're, you're giving yourself away. It's your tell. Bums, for example. Now, I wonder if this could be poet here. I, there's no particular reason bums, for example, needs to have poet. It's just that if this is Homer, Homer was a poet. And so I'm wondering, this looks like it's probably also a theme answer. So I'm just wondering if there's actually something that ties these together around poets or poetry, perhaps, even though I don't yet know what it is. So bums, for example, Th that's a, that's a very far flung guess. I have no idea if it means anything. What was this woodshop tool? And here discriminatory compensation practice. Boy, I'm just not sure. Um, uh, I don't know. Caesar dressing. So this sort of looks like Caesar salad dressing, right? The dressing made with, well, I was going to say made with anchovies. So I think that's slightly disputed whether it traditionally would be or not, although I like it made with anchovies. Um, but the question mark suggests probably won't be referring to a Caesar salad. The question mark indicates some kind of pun or wordplay. So I'm guessing dressing in this case is referring to the garb, the dress that Caesar of ancient Rome would have worn. But what is that? Is there a different Spanish article that would allow us to say togas or something like that? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just delete this all just so I don't, just so I don't limit myself before I'm actually certain what the answers are here. Okay, let's look, let's go here. Peruse, to per, peruse. So if you peruse something, you sort of browse through it or, or use it um, straightforwardly. Um, Skim doesn't really, doesn't quite fit. I'm just trying to think of things with four letters. Here we have bubbly source. So this could be referring to a sparkling wine, often referred to as bubbly. It could be, it's an asti or ast. There's an Italian region. That Prosecco could be derived from. And I, I always mix it up with all the, the, all the quite a, several crossword words that start with A-S-T, and I often mix them all up. If this were S, does that help with bums, for example? It could be bums meaning your your rear end in the kind of British slang sense, or could be or could be a sort of pejorative term for someone who's homeless, or just kind of a general pejorative term for somebody who you consider, I don't know, beneath you, I guess. I'm not sure. Bums, for example. Or it could be it could be bums as in bum a cigarette. Ask someone and receive, I guess, something. Uh, I don't know. It could be the sound a drum makes. I'm really reaching with that one. Let's keep going. Court organization. So it could be Tennis, it could be court tennis, could be court meaning obviously court of law, but I'm wondering if it's less obvious than that. What's the tennis, or what are the tennis organizations? I don't remember what they are. <laughs> That's frustrating. Uh, Spanish article, yam source historically. So here's another um, theme clue. I'm just going to skip that for now. Quebec Street. So obviously French is spoken in Quebec, so it could be rue, French for street. And then one-time initials on the Supreme Court could be Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, the, the uh, late Supreme Court justice. And then place to find a comet. This will be another theme clue, I suspect. Does the Watusi say? So the Watusi is a dance. What is that? Not sure. Shark's racket. You could have a loan shark. Loans. Doesn't fit rue, obviously. What about this pickle unit? A spear. You could have pickle spears. So a unit of pickles could be a spear. It's sort of an odd phrase, but it 
technically works, I think. Court organization. Oh boy, this is frustrating that I can't think what this would be. Who governs tennis? I don't know. Oh, shark's racket could be usury. So, uh, you know, a loan shark would be usurious. That would 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 um, charge uh, extortionate rates of interest. So maybe that's what this is getting at. So then, U.S. I don't know tennis organization or something that doesn't look right to me. Let's uh, keep looking. Yam source historically. Oh, I just don't know. What about what about this place to find a comet? And, oh, gyrate. That's the Watusi. Gyrates. There we go. So that fits dancing. And King of Saudi Arabia beginning in 2015. Oh, it's infuriating that I can't bring this to mind instantly. I'm going to need some crosses. And hideaway could be stash. So this could be brass something or it could be so many things. Certain facial decoration. It could be any number of things as well. It could be jewelry or some or some kind of makeup or something else. Courier and, oh, this is a company and I also can't bring it to mind. Feature of many a druid's robe. A, a cowl or a hood could be cowl. Does that help? Some raw, yes, some raw materials are ores. Actually, that could be cowl or hood. So I shouldn't use that as a confirmation of cowl because the O would be the same. Uh, so if this were H, does, do either of these look more likely? Yeah, I don't think either of them necessarily is obviously right or wrong. Um, like a wide grin, ear to ear or info on a security badge for short. Well, name was the first thing that came to mind, but that's not for short. So we want something abbreviated or contracted here. Um, position or job title or company name. What else would be on a security badge? Date of birth. I don't know why that would necessarily would be on there. Falls into line. Diamond figure. So this could be someone on a baseball diamond. So it could be a member of a baseball team. Could be something geometric, obviously. It could be something around jewel, uh, diamond jewelry. Home country of the two-time Olympic marathon winner, Eliud Kipchoge. I'm not sure. Facility often referred to by its first letter. It could be the YMCA, the Young Men's Christian Association, the sort of uh, urban athletic centers, recreational centers, community centers, often referred to as the Y. I bet that's what that is. That there. Yon? Maybe. If on a security badge, like a wide grin. I don't know. Maybe I don't like this yet. Mortgage organization. Mortgage organization. Is this some? Is this an organization that regulates mortgages in the U.S. probably, or is it an organization that provides mortgages? I'm guessing the former. Sweet, just a sort of general exclamation of positivity, I assume. It's an honor. Well, here in the U.K., you could have something like an OBE, which is an honor uh, given to... Uh, Order of the British Empire is sort of given to people who have achieved significant things in their careers, but uh, does that, doesn't, I don't know. Derriere, well, that could be, <laughs> uh, which one was it? Bums, for example, could be Derriere as in bum. Derriere, uh, Drench. J to blank Ello, the remixes, 2002 album. I'm guessing it's the or the with an A. Um, sorry if you're hearing some coughing in the background. I'm not sure if that's coming through. Uh, Woohoo. And it may come in shells. Pasta. Uh, shells are one form of pasta shape. Drench could be sop. Drench with water, sop with water. Diamond figure. Home country, yeah, okay. Oh, laundry leftover. I don't think I saw this. Laundry leftover. I don't know, a dryer sheet or lint something? I had a good start to this puzzle, I think, but it's certainly slowed down considerably. I don't think I ever looked at the revealer either. Let's maybe take a look at that. Oh, steps on a scale. That there, I thought that was maybe yawn, but I'm not sure. Sweetheart. 
thoroughly or a hint for parsing some lowercase letters in four of this puzzle's clues. Thoroughly or a hint for parsing some lowercase letters in four of this puzzle's clues. Interesting. So we'll need to look at lowercase letters in presumably these four long answers. Thoroughly. Homer's self-satisfied assertion. Bums, for example. What does that mean? Yam source, historically. Boy, I have no idea what that's getting at. I might have to <laughs> fill in more of this more of this uh, revealer. The revealer being the uh, sort of explanatory clue that ties together what's going on with the theme. And in this case, I do need the help, I think, to solve the puzzle. So let's keep looking. What else can we solve? Let's jump back up to the top of the puzzle. I don't think we looked at the downs for most of the puzzle. Waistline. So obviously this sounds like waistline. You're the, you know, the, the, I guess, circumference of your waist, but it's spelled as waist as in rubbish, garbage. So, so what does that mean? Turns out I don't know. Lake in the Sierra Nevada. Uh, boy, I'm not sure about that either. Sounding shock could be a gas. It doesn't fit. A gape. Grok could be to get. I grokked something. I get something. I think that comes from, is it Robert Heinlein, I think, maybe? The mid-century American science fiction author, I think, maybe termed grok. Jazz age, e.g., would be an era, I suppose. Is it that straightforward? Tour de France leg. Oh, it could be étage, so stage, a stage of Tour de France, the um, bicycle race, which I think is happening in Denmark. This I think it's will be in Denmark this year, or part of it is, or however that works. Okay. Oh, Lake Tahoe. So right, I'm. I needed a cross to get that, but. Uh, I have visited Lake Tahoe before um, for skiing. I used to go on an annual ski ski trip with some ex-coworkers of mine to Lake Tahoe, which is just a few hours away from San Francisco, so it wasn't uh, too bad of a trek, which is where I used to live. Uh, sounding shocked, right. So keen. And, oh, so Homer's self-satisfied assertion. What a good dog am I? What? <laughs> All right, there's something going on here that the revealer would be explaining, but I'm not. What a good boy am I? Wood shop tool. B looks more likely than D to me. Table saw, maybe? What a good boy am I? What a good boy am I? So what does this mean? How do I parse... A lowercase letter in the clue for this to make sense. Discriminatory compensation practice. Oh, pay, pay gap. Okay. I was, okay. That's, okay, that's interesting. I mean, I suppose it makes sense. I, pay gap was the first thing that came into my mind, but I didn't think it was a valid answer because I wouldn't have thought a pay gap itself could be described as a practice. I would have assumed the pay gap is something that results from the practice. So the practice is any is 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 sort of um, you know uh, gender discrimination or something or something like that, and then the result of that practice is the pay gap. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's a little bit iffy. But but it's whatever. I mean, it's fair enough. We understand what it means. So a potential con is maybe a perp. A, Oh, a con is a convict. That's actually a version of con that didn't occur to me. Okay, so perpetrator, a perp, and then... So perp is short for perpetrator as con is short for convict. So we're matching the kind of abbreviated slang nature of the of the clue. We're mirroring that in the answer. And then, good, this is indeed REM. Not because I actually knew this answer, but because it was a band name that fit the crosses, which is often how it works in crosswords, I guess. So this is what a good boy am I. Boy, I feel... I don't feel I'm being a very good boy right now in terms of identifying how this works. So here we have waistline. Waistline. And here we have sounding shocked. Could it, is it a gape? Keen. Uh, I don't know. Aurora's counterpart. 
what is that getting at? And feasts. Okay, so anyway, what was the bums, for example? So it is poet, but I don't know that... I have no idea if it has anything to do with the Homer thing. Bums, for example. Well, this could be dish or fish or wish or Scottish, actually. Sorry, there we go. Scottish poet, bum, oh, 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 oh. So bums, for example, would be burns, for example. So this is something around kerning. So kerning is the, um, okay, I can tell this is going to be very clever. I just haven't yet figured out all the rest of the clues yet. But I can tell this is a good crossword theme and will be fun to, to figure out the other examples of. So kerning is a, it's an element of typesetting. Uh, and it deals with how much space is put between individual char type, uh, characters, typeset. So if you think of an R and an N, uh, and you consider the kerning, in other words, how close those characters are positioned to one another on the page, if the R and the N become very close to one another, they start to resemble an M. And uh, in this case, that's, that's what we're meant to understand. We're meant to understand that actually, this is meant to be referring to Burns, Robbie Burns, Rabbi Burns, the Scottish, the great Scottish poet. Uh, and so Burns, for example, is a Scottish poet. But there's been a kerning mistake, and the R and the N are so close to one another that it appears to read bums, for example. So that means so we've got to figure out what's going on here as well. So oh, Horner's self-satisfied assertion. Right. Is it Jack Horner? There's a children's nursery rhyme around the character named Horner, Jack Horner, I think. And one of the things he says in the, in the, in the nursery rhyme is what a good boy am I? And I can't think of, I can't think of the rest of it. I don't remember the context of this, but that I, that's sort of triggering a vague memory in my mind. And so Horner has been improperly kerned and now appears to read Homer, Homer's self-satisfied assertion, Horner's self-satisfied assertion. So, and, and these are both R N. So I wonder if they'll all be RN. Actually, let's look at this one. Yes, yam source historically is going to be yarn source historically. Boy, I'm not surprised I didn't get this off the bat. That is bonkers. I wonder I wonder how many... So what was the Scottish poet was the thing that, it, that, I, that I got and then Burns, right? I wonder how many people, which of these clues was the, was the one that unlocked it for each person? And, and I guess in some people's cases, maybe... You have to get the revealer first. I guess it just depends what crosses you ended up getting. And I just I ended up getting enough around here to get Scottish poet. So let's see. Yarn source. His oh, spinning wheel. There we go. Yeah. So traditionally, yarn would be produced uh, via a spinning wheel, as opposed to some larger scale industrial yarn production method. I suppose. Okay. So bubbly source is going to be Asti. There we go. And to peruse is to scan. So you could scan a text. You could peruse the text. Oh, this is USTA. You, you must be the United States Tennis Association, I suppose. And then feasts, ah, repasts. So meals. So this is referring to the noun, feasts, meals, uh, repasts. And then waistline. Why do I not see what this is? It's very frustrating. And sounding shocked. Oh, a gasp. Why didn't I think of that one? I kept thinking of a gape, which is... I was very skeptical about a gape because that's more about how you look. You're a, you're a gape, whereas a gasp is about how you sound. So that's what that is. I don't know why it didn't come to mind. So keen. I still don't see what this is. Um, and oh, Aurora's counterpart, Eos. So uh, we have gods. We have classical gods here. And then... Why... This is very irritating. What am I not, what am I missing about this? So waistline, could it be a line that you say? Tour de France leg. Maybe this isn't meant to be in French. Oh, no, I guess it's not. Boy, that really threw me. I really thought that was going to be correct, but it's not. It's just stage. So it's the, it's just the English version of that. And then a waistline would be a sewer. So literally a, a, line through which waste runs. And then keen is eager, which is perfectly, 
perfectly good cross. That was the sort of enthusiastic version of Keen that I had mentioned earlier. All right, so we have the top roughly half of the puzzle filled. If I can fill this in, we'll have more than the top half. Spanish article so that, oh, 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 a tunic. I see, sorry. I saw the U from the U from Una here and I thought, tunas? Tuna isn't in a Caesar salad, but then no, it's nothing to do with that at all. It's a tunic that Caesar might have worn. Okay. Egg prefix would be OV as in uh, ovum, egg. And then, oh, courier and ives. Yes. What is that? I recognize that and I can't think what it is. Is that a clothier? What is it? What is courier and ives? I can't think what they produce, but it's a brand name I've at least heard of. Certain facial decoration. Ah, nose ring. Okay. So it was jewelry after all. And then, uh, right, good. Place to find a comet or a place to find a cornet. So a cornet is a brass instrument. So you might find it in a brass section in an orchestra or uh, a big band or a jazz band or something like that. Feature of many a druid's robe. Okay, it wasn't cowl after all. So it's a good, a good thing I didn't assume that was correct. It is a hood. And then sea eagles are urns, urns, whatever this is. Very common crossword bird, I would say. And then... Laundry leftover, like a wide grin, info on a security badge for short. ID number, maybe? Could be something like that. Laundry leftover. Oh, an odd sock. Yeah, sometimes you will mystifyingly find the odd sock in the laundry and wonder where its partner has gone. Falls into line. Diamond figure. Oh, carrot? You could say a whatever carrot, di diamond what is it? Weighing? Is carrot a unit of weight? I actually don't remember in the case of diamonds. I know that there are two different, there's a carrot with a C and a carrot with a K, and one of them is maybe purity and the other one is weight, I think. Home country of the two-time Olympic marathon winner, Eliud Kipchoge. Uh, Kenya, presumably. Um, I think which has produced a number of Olympic uh, level marathon runners. And sweetheart in the modern vernacular would be bay. Falls into line, oh, obeys, yes, fall into line, obey. And so here we have woohoo, oh, carrot with an A, sorry. Um, and then woohoo is oh, yay, I suppose. Yeah, oh, yay is sort of an odd, slightly awkward phrasing, but fair enough. Okay, so now let's look, let's take another look at this revealer thoroughly, or a hint for parsing some lowercase letters in four of this puzzle's clues. All right, well, there's our RN, which when they're lowercase would look like an M. So that's, that's, from something to stern, thoroughly, yeah, from, this will be a so nautical reference, from, from this way to M probably, from M and then R and from, uh, I don't know, mm, that's annoying that I can't bring that to mind. What about this? Uh, that's the king of Saudi Arabia. Why do I not? That's infuriating. I'm very disappointed in myself about that one. Like a wide grin. And that there. Maybe this is yawn. Facility. Oh, right. This is the facility. Okay, so this probably is YMCA. And that puts M and RN in the circled cells. So that, that does, that seems pretty plausible. What about this? Sensed without being sure. So this is a funny case where the revealer, we actually, we solved the, 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 um, theme mechanic without the revealer. And now the revealer is still remaining. So the revealer is not, it's not at all serving as the revealer. In fact, if anything, it was the theme answers that were the revealer and the revealer, official revealer answer is the one that needs unlocking here. Anyway, sensed without being sure. And then here we have critical time. Um, maybe this isn't nose ring. Maybe it's nose bead or something like that. Maybe that's what was throwing me off. Because this could be critical, critical time could be D-Day, which is often metaphorically used to refer to the kind of the moment of truth or when something needs to happen. Yes, and a, tooth, a wide grin could be a toothy grin. You could show, be showing your teeth with a wide grin. And then sensed without being sure, had a hunch. Oh, so this isn't, it still isn't even bead. Uh, nose stud, there we go. That's that's more frequently used than bead in this context. Okay, that, that looks right. So derriere could be end, rear. Oh, from stem to stern. Okay. So I really was being thrown off by my poor crosses there. From stem to stern. That sounds like 
that sounds like a real phrase. And we've gone from, oh, I see. Yes, right. So Stem and Stern is one final example of, oh, that's very clever. That's very clever. So uh, the constructors here have found a phrase that has S-T-E-M and S-T-E-R-N. So two words that are distinct words that themselves could suffer this exact same kerning mishap if typeset incorrectly. That's very clever. All right. And then steps on a scale. Oh. Is it fa's or laws as in do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So these are steps on a scale. Oh, is it King Solomon? And that would be laws, one of the, that, that system is called solfege. So the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Um, is a way of representing the notes of a musical scale in a sort of non-key specific way. So regardless of what key you're in, so instead of saying C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you say Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, and then that would hold regardless of what note you're starting from or what scale you're in, if you see what I mean, what key you're in. Uh, so I think that's what that means by steps on a scale. But it could have been Fa's as well if that was appropriate to the cross, which it wasn't in this case. Okay, mortgage organization. And then here we have sweet, could be rad. So we're, we're, if that's the slang term we're using, it sort of matches the clue in the sense that they're both, they're both slang terms indicating an expression of positivity. And they're both, I would say, roughly in the same tonal space in terms of how the type of person who might say it and the context in which they might say it. And that's usually true of these kind of slang deployments of slang terms in the, in the New York Times crossword is you'll match the feeling of it between the clue and the answer. So, okay, so yes, this was indeed hunch. If you sensed something without being sure, you had a hunch. All right. I had a hunch early on that this was going to be poet, even though I had I was completely incorrect about why. I thought maybe it would tie to Homer. Absolutely not connected whatsoever. A complete coincidence, I think. Anyway, it's an honor would be... Oh, an ode. Wow, I can't believe I... I can't believe I didn't immediately, I said, I thought maybe OBE initially, which is funny because two of the three letters are actually the same, but no, it wasn't that. It was an ode, a, uh, a poetic tribute. So you could have an ode in your honor. An ode is of course the official crossword form of the New York Times crossword, official poetic form. Arabian port would be the port of Aden. And then mortgage organization is the FHA or the Federal Housing Agency, I think. And there we go. There was the Thursday puzzle. What a great theme. I think that was excellent. One of those, one of those themes that just seems totally inscrutable at first. I mean, until you understand what's going on with the kerning, Homer's self-satisfied assertion, what a good boy am I? I mean, that is just, is utterly baffling. And then even, I mean, this is even more so. Bums, for example, <laughs> working out to Scottish poet. I mean, that couldn't be more ridiculous. At least what a good boy am I is a self-satisfied assertion, even though it's, even if it's not clear why Homer is saying it. Bums being, <laughs> being a Scottish poet is just absolute nonsense. And then similarly, a place to find a comet in a brass section. What does that mean? It means absolutely nothing. Oh, and then here as well, yam source historically, spinning wheel, just totally ridiculous. And, and actually Homer's self-satisfied assertion being the first one is actually, I think, particularly good theme construction here because it is the case that the self-satisfied assertion of it did allow me to think, well, it could this I makes sense because it's a self-satisfied assertion. So it could be something that Homer is saying about himself. So it did, it did start to, it, it was the least inexplicable, I guess, of the, what, four? four primary theme answers. And so it being the first one was helpful in that it, it at least gave me something to, 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 to orbit around, uh, whereas the rest of these are just bonkers. Uh, and then finally, we tied it all together with the revealer that was actually the most difficult one for me to solve from stem to stern with this very clever stem becoming stern once the, uh, I guess, once the kerning has been corrected and the R and N have been separated. And then, of course, that means thoroughly from stem to stern. And that is the, the sort of initial clue given for that answer. 
Well, I thoroughly enjoyed this crossword. I enjoyed it from stem to stern. I think it was an incredibly well executed, uh, a great theme idea and extremely well executed. And I love how totally, totally baffling uh, these these clues were but until you understand what's going on with them. So let me know how you failed. Uh, sorry, don't let me know. Well, I guess do let me know how you failed if you did in fact fail, but I am more also curious to know how you fared more generally in terms of figuring this out. And I'm going to move on, going to move on to the clues from yesterday's puzzle because there were several. So apologies if I don't uh, read all of them because um, this has already been, a, a, this has been on the long side because that puzzle was a bit tricky. So regarding uh, the nuclear codes clue yesterday resolving to genome, I was thinking, well, this must have something to do with the nucleus of an atom genome. And several people commented about this. So again, if I don't read your particular comment, I apologize. But Echo said, yes, genome is correct. The genome is the term for your collective DNA, which is kept within the nucleus of cells. Being in the nucleus, it could be called nuclear. And DNA is the code for proteins that make you, so being a code in the nucleus would also make it a nuclear code. And then Rachel added in reply to that comment, it could also be a reference to DNA being made of nucleic acids. Though, of course, nucleic is also derived from it being in the nucleus, you know, she believes. And uh, there were some more comments about that if you're interested in reading even more. Kathleen Quinn had not heard of Rochambeau used as an alternative name for rock, paper, scissors. So she says, having never heard of Rochambeau, I had to get it entirely through crosses. When I looked it up afterwards, I learned that the name Rochambeau, sometimes spelled ro dash sham dash bow is used mainly in the Western United States and is widely believed to be a reference to Count Rochambeau, <laughs> as spelled in the French manner, R-O-C-H-A-M-B-E-A-U, who, according to a widespread legend, played the game during the American Revolutionary War. And then Laura Sexton replied to that comment to say, I've always seen the game spelled Rochambeau in the French manner, which would not fit in the puzzle, so I had to use the crosses. And um, I actually, yes, I only learned Rochambeau was, despite actually having spent most of my life in the Western, the, the, the West Coast of the United States, I actually didn't know that term for, for most of my life. Uh, I always knew it as uh, rock, paper, scissors, and I only learned that in, in my adulthood, the alternative name Rochambeau. So I'm not surprised that e even apparently being from the region where that terminology is more common, I'm not surprised people uh, from elsewhere were not familiar with it. Um, ben Ward explains the Margot Robbie film Bombshell, which I had sort of vaguely remembered the name of but couldn't place. Uh, he explains Bombshell from 2019, also starring Charlize Theron, uh, Nicole Kidman, and John Lithgow, was a drama based on the accounts of the women at Fox News uh, who set out to expose CEO Roger Ailes for sexual harassment. It was, according to my personal post-viewing notes, a large ensemble of strong performances, incredible makeup, a sorkin -y script, and great pacing, all working together to create a finely tuned balance of righteous anger, triumph, and frustration. Um, so there we have it. And then uh, Retro Tom 30 explains... Choi Wushik played the leading role of Kim Ki Woo in the film Parasite. His New York Times crossword appearance is a reminder that everyone should see this fantastic film. I agree. I, I uh, saw that film in the theaters. I guess I wonder if that was one of the. How how late did that come out before the pandemic started? I can't remember. I guess it would have been one of the later films I saw before that all happened. But yes, I really enjoyed it. Um, and that's that's it. I suppose for now. I think there might have been a couple other things, but not necessarily additional errors or oversights of, on my part. So thank you to everybody who left comments. Thank you to everybody who was subscribed. It was fun to get over that 6,000 uh, milestone. And thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll be back tomorrow for Friday, the first themeless, the first of two themeless puzzles for the week. This was a, a great puzzle, I think, to cap off the themed uh, the themed segment of our week. Just a fantastic theme, I think. Very well executed. So um, I'll be, be happy to, uh, to use that as our, as our theme conclusion this week before we get on to the possibly trickier Friday and Saturday puzzles. Do join me for those. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.